Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So today we're going to take a look at the battle of the billionaires as Mark Cuban and Elon Musk get into words. And Mark pretty much just lays it out and says, look, we need to be using uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. because It's actually a lot better for the environment than what you were talking about. So we'll take a look at that on top of just how bad uh, this uh, retreat or this little dip was as far as in the grand scheme of things. And then we're going to take a look at uh, just how early we are uh, as far as like people getting into cryptocurrency. And then finally, we're going to finish up with just a little bit of talk about uh, maximalism, because I think it's important that we get this out of the way now. And finally, uh, we'll take a look at uh, Vitalik Buterin burning $6.7 billion worth of Shiba Inu token and what that did to the price. So we'll go over all those things. There's a lot. But uh, first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So uh, last night, just so you know, uh, this is a different space. Uh, we were in Puerto Rico in the condo, and we're just here to uh, meet with the lawyers and talk about the whole move over here. And uh, I will be doing a video uh, about how that all works. And I'll be getting together uh, the lawyers, the real estate agents, uh, the CPAs, uh, business people, and then actually people who are with boots on the ground as far as a lifestyle here. So I will put that all together as soon as I get all the information and I can bring it to you in one nice, tidy, clean package. So I will get that done. But right now, today, uh, this is what we got. So last night, quite a bit of a dip. We got here in Puerto Rico. I did a quick video and we were talking pretty much about Elon Musk and his tweet storm. Eh, really wasn't a tweet storm, just one sentence and it dropped the entire market. Like uh, just an amazing amount. I've never seen one word drop the market but hey it's crypto and here we are so right now we're at 2.11 trillion market cap a little bit of a uh, rebound from the 2.04 or whatever else it was so i'm happy with that and here's what we got with the uh, the prices still down still green or still a red day what are you gonna do and um it's a bump on because to me i find this fascinating when we've got uh mark cuban who before in the beginning wasn't a big fan of crypto and digital assets and all of a sudden he's like yeah maybe bitcoin and i was like yeah ethereum could be a supercomputer and then oh dogecoin we're going to accept that in our mavericks gift shop for all our sweet merch so i mean hey it's something but the mark cuban comes out and says look you need to accept bitcoin because it actually helps the environment and it's not just mark spouting off going i think this is what it is he references two good studies and it makes sense and to me this is good for the entire community because it's not just about you know getting things out there it's about uh, having a discussion and it's tough to do that on twitter trust me i know but uh when you come with facts it's kind of hard to you know go against those so mark cuban here's the message he goes we at mavs.com will continue to accept Bic bitcoin ETH, doge because we know that replacing gold as story of value will help the environment and what he's actually referencing is an article by the new york times i'll link it in the description uh, published back in 2005, shed light on the gold mining industry. And uh, this included, and it wasn't just like, you know, a, a little snippet off piece. They included tours of the gold mines in the American West, Latin America, Africa, and Europe. States some metal mines, including gold mines, have become the near equivalent of nuclear waste dumps. Did not know that. That must be tended in perpetuity. Hard rock mining generates more toxic waste than any other industry in the United States, according to the EPA. Agency estimated last year the uh, cost of cleaning this up was $54 billion. So uh, no idea it was that much of a carbon footprint, uh, but here we are. But in all honesty, doesn't everything take energy? I mean, and people will talk about this like, they're like, hey, look, I mean, Bitcoin takes a lot of energy, but so does running a bank. So does running this, so does running that. The question is, is how much you're using for renewables and, you know, how much is it really actually needed? And the next article really breaks it all down. There was a, it was called Bitcoin does consume a lot of energy, but here's why it's worth it. And I'm going to link that in the description. You should read this article. It is fantastic by uh, Dominic Frisby. And he just pretty much lays out why it all is. And he, and he goes in, into the history as far as like Adam Back and, and, and why he said that these things need to have monetary value. And he even takes a look at like spam and, and all those things. It's, it's really good. So I'll link it. You can check it out. But it just makes a lot of sense. And on top of that, uh, it's good that Mark comes out because usually you kind of only listen to your peers, unfortunately. I mean, I can go tell Elon Musk that he should you know, do this certain thing, but when a billionaire comes out, it kind of helps out a little bit. And then, just so you know, um, if you're new to crypto, welcome. 
just know that these dips are common, but this is a little more, more uncommon. And uh, this decline that we just had, the reason why I say it's, it's uncommon is because usually there's a lot of factors. And I talked about this in, in a tweet. I said, and I actually talked about this in the video yesterday. There's was really four reasons why we saw a big dip. One of those was uh, Elon Musk. The second one is that uh, US, uh, we owe our taxes today. So you're gonna see a lot of people selling things to get into, uh, to pay their taxes. And when people say, ah, but people already done that before. No, uh, I have a, a, I have a affiliate with CryptoTrader.tax and I can tell you that the biggest day that I had for all signups over the last three months was yesterday. So that's just me talking uh, and extrapolate that out to, you know, hundreds of other people that are probably affiliates uh, with crypto trader and you, you get my point. But the big thing here is that this decline that we just had from uh, just April 14th to really today, it's a 35% drop from the Bitcoin high of 64.8 to Bitcoin low of 42. Is that, are those numbers uncommon? No. And we can see them all the way throughout. I mean, look at uh, December, December 2017, for a year, December 2018, it was down 84%. That's crazy, but it is what it is. And it's volatile. But if you believe in uh, what's going to happen in the projects, it's not a big deal. You just go, well, it goes down. Uh, last night, I took a look at my portfolio, and I was down uh, bigly. And everybody talks about how you got to buy the dip, you got to buy the dip. But even to me, it's still hard to go, I'm going to buy some more. And, but you just have to, let me rephrase that. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to listen to me. This is just financial opinion, not financial advice. But what I did, I bought a lot of stuff last night. And it's like, I've been doing this every time for these dips. Like the last one was, again, the same thing. Elon Musk tweet. It's just getting out there and doing the work. And when people come up to you later and be like, oh, you're so lucky because, you know, you, you got so much in this crypto and you were so... No, I wasn't lucky. I did my job. I put the work in, and these are the fruits of the labor. So just kind of remember that as uh, as time goes on. And then lastly, uh, just as you, as uh, I want to point out, that uh, I think the reason why Tesla and Elon Musk are putting all this information as far as like we need to for you know renewables and and have a carbon tax, it's because of Tesla seeks entry in the U.S. fuel credit market. And I'm gonna skip all this up to the very last part. Uh, Tesla would generate the most lucrative type of credits, known as D3s, which trade at a significant premium to the larger pool of additional ethanol credits. So just remember that uh, there's a reason behind the reason. That's really it. That's uh, really what I think is going on. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. And that is uh, Mark Cuban. <laughs> that is Mark Cuban again. And I thought this was interesting because Mark's like, Bitcoin eat Dogecoin. But then he asked the question on Twitter, like, who uses Cardano for anything? And uh, in all honest, Mark, honesty, uh, no one was using, no one was really using Dogecoin that much until, you know, you brought a use case for it, which is to uh, Mavericks merchandise. And now I know people will say, you know, but for charity and for the things, sure, that's true. I don't, I don't, I have nothing against Dogecoin. I don't really care. But uh, when Mark here is like talking about like, what's the use case? Well, Mark, you gave it a use case. You accepted it for, you know, your merchandise. If you do the same thing for Cardano, the same thing. And then I, I thought it was a pretty good back and forth. And Charles Hoskinson, CEO of IOHK, he put on a nice little video and just explained to Mark what's so great about Cardano. And then Mark comes back. He says, he goes, well, first Charles says, seriously, Mark, it was a friendly invite. So you invited him up to his uh, ranch in Wyoming. He says, uh, but if you want me to pitch ADA over Twitter, okay. We have 5 million students in Ethiopia, thousands of assets they issued on Cardano, a nice DAP ecosystem brewing for a smart contract launch. And people are right, smart contracts are not available right now to Cardano, and it won't happen until August. So we're looking at two and a half months. So yeah, you're right. No one's really building. I mean, they're building, but uh, there's nothing really live. And a new VC model with uh, Catalyst. And then uh, Mark just says, that's great. I'm happy for your app in Ethiopia and thousands of assets included. Let's talk when the platform stops brewing and starts serving. Not saying you can't do well, just saying you aren't there yet, but you're in an ETH OG. Why no smart contracts start? And it's a good point. And then, of course, Charles can come back and go, like Ray regimented it. 
We're trying to, uh, for sustainability and adaptability and actually so we can scale things and to make it actually function because we just saw what happened with, e with Ethereum and their, their, their crazy gas fees. He'll come back and it'll go from there. The big thing is you have the discussion. You have the discussion. You don't call each other uh, morons and idiots and uh, you know, just, just you know, ridiculousness that we see on Twitter all day long. And uh, I think it's good. And uh, hopefully it'll all work out. And again, I think Cardano and Ethereum can do really great. I think Avalanche can do uh, really great things. And Tezos and all the different smart contracts. There's room for more than one. That's all I'll say. And that leads me to my next point. Two things. First of all, maximalism. Let's kind of drop it, can we? Even I get caught up in that, even on Twitter. So I have to remember, and Raul Powell said something very smart. He said, Bitcoin maxis are the problem for the space. When people are getting in, they listen to these all these people and it gets very negative. So just kind of just, you know, be like, hey, it's okay. And I made this example like this <laughs> on Twitter. I said, and the comment was, I'm bullish on Disney Plus. And then the Netflix army comes out and says, you're an idiot. Netflix is the best documentaries, more viewers. Prime Video Army. Prime Video says, you're so dumb. We've got way more independent movies and we're built on Amazon, you idiot. And then me, I just says, hey, you could have all three. It's not entertainment advice. And the reason why I said this was, was it was a joke to just kind of say, like, who cares? You know, you can have all three. Like, I own Cardano, Ethereum, and Avalanche, and a bunch of other different platforms. So what is, who cares? So just, just kind of just go, hey, if yours makes it great, I think mine's going to do well. But uh, hey, uh, you know, gentleman handshake, and then uh, let's see who wins the race. And that's really should be it. I think if we can do more of that, I think we'd be a better place. Uh, as far as like accepting new people as they come in. And speaking of that, there was this one from uh, uh, Sam Rid Mishra. He says, I'm glad to see how many people now, as compared to past cycles, know about crypto. And few talk about the use cases, not only on Twitter, but also in the real world. And before we wrap all this up, I just want to say this. Um, so the whole thing about this is that uh, in 2017, when everything just went to the moon, uh, I remember everybody talking about Bitcoin and crypto and everybody was talking about it. And as soon as there was a crash in 2018, nobody talked about it. And uh, even my friends, you know, would come to me like, hey, how's that working out for you, genius? And, uh, you know, didn't. Of course, it was tough to, to, to swallow your pride and go, yeah, 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 I didn't really do too well. But I think it's going to come back. I'm a dollar cost average. You're like, okay. And I'll hear so the thing I want to talk to, to, to speak to is that I... I think when people talk about cryptocurrency and you know and, and they, they talk about bitcoin and whatnot i think what the real message we should be is we should probably just kind of get away from the cryptocurrency part and at least i'm going to try to do this you can do whatever you want to but um an example of this is as we get new people in uh they're still confused so like we picked up my wife's friend yesterday from the airport here in puerto rico and and we're talking about cryptocurrency. She's like, yeah, I, I, I saw that on the news. And when they talk about it and they're like, it's, it's currency, but I don't understand because I have a dollar. So what's the point of having a currency online? Same thing. And I was like, yeah, you're absolutely right. And then, so to actually explain it, like if you really want to break it down like that, now you got to start to talk about the Federal Reserve and, you know, uh, that little nonsense quantitative easing. And then you have to talk about uh, all the uh, fractional reserve lending and how it's important to be unbanked. And it's very difficult to get in that conversation. To really, to make it simple, like I just said, it's like all about stores of values, right? Gold, silver, paintings, like this one back here. I don't know who made this. But, but I mean, those can be a store of values. It makes it a lot easier to explain a store of values versus a cryptocurrency. And then we talk about digital assets. I go... It's like a you know like any kind anything that you can buy online that would be considered of value. So uh, even think about like um, uh, airline rewards points. You know that would be like a digital asset type of thing. And I guess in some way it, it would also be considered a currency. So I just think it's just a little bit easier to you know talk about uh, instead of going it's a cryptocurrency to say stores of values, digital assets because we got so many people coming in. I just want to make it simple for everybody. Again, you can go as deep as you want to, but I think it's just easier for the day. And let's just finish off uh, with, with two things before we get going. First of all, today's the last day to pay taxes. This is the last day you're going to hear me talking about taxes until next year. So if you're looking for uh, uh, some help, use CryptoTrader.tax. Link's in the description. Dan users get 20% uh, off. And I just paid mine, and it sure did hurt. <laughs> That's all I can really say. And then lastly, 
I just want to talk about uh, Shiba Inu. Uh, this is mostly for my friend George, so we can. Hey George, just because uh, he's a big investor into the, the, these, these uh, dog coins. Just so you know, Vitalik burned six point seven billion dollars worth of Shiba to reward generous hodlers, and this is what he said. He says I've actually been impressed by how the dog token communities have treated the recent donations. And if you don't know, uh, Vitalik just he donated a billion dollars worth of Shiba Inu, which was gifted to him from one of the founders. And he put that into India uh, COVID-19 relief, which I thought was fantastic. They didn't want to do that, the uh, founders and co-founders, but uh, he did it. And uh, look, there's people dying over there, so I can't. I mean, that's great. He says, uh, plenty of dog people have shown their generosity and their willingness to not just focus on their own profits, but also be interested in making the world as a whole better. I support all who are earnestly doing that. And because of that, because people weren't like, you know, damning him to hell, they, he said, hey, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Let me just burn the rest of my, and he burned $6.7 billion worth. So that should do a little something something for the price. Just so you know, Shiba Inu is uh, ranked 22nd. And uh, it was just listed on Binance, which really helped it to go up like to the moon. The last 24 hours, he saw it go from, I, I can't even, I don't even know this number. 0.0001259 and it went up a lot. That's all I can tell you. So last 24 hour one up 5%, seven days 900%, 30 days, wow, 2000 plus percent. So just so you know, if you're looking into those coins, uh, that probably is a catalyst, especially as things bounce back, but just financial opinion. Okay, so that's it for today. Look, I know the audio is not fantastic. We're in the condo for the next five, four or five days. It's probably gonna be like this. We'll probably meet up with uh, Ryan and Alex and uh, Weston and the crew today. Maybe a little uh, Lucas if he gets uh, time. Not today, it's sometime this week. I got stuff to do. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks for uh, giving uh, watch all the way to the end. I appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, all that great stuff. See you on the next one.